Hello, and welcome to another edition of Lucian Sets. Today's puzzle is called Turipuru Nishio, and we have normal Sudoku rules apply. X windmill. Rotationally symmetric cells must sum to 10. And I give a couple of examples. For example, row 4, column 2, plus row 6, column 8, sum to 10. We can see these pairs are rotationally symmetric from each other in that if I took this grid and I uh, flipped it 180 degrees, this cell would map to this cell. The same is true for the next example I give where row 3, column 7 plus row 7, column 3 also must sum to 10. Though I'll explain this one a little bit of a different way in that you can draw a line through the center cell of the grid and find that rotationally symmetric pair can be a little tough to visualize even I struggle with it a little bit sometimes but it's uh once you uh once you get into the puzzle I'm sure it will uh, make sense then we have binaro three orthogonally connected cells in a straight line horizontally or vertically may not all be of the same parity so I give an example once again row 5 columns 2 to 4 must contain at least one odd and one even digit. So, again, what are we looking at here? Well, these three cells are orthogonally connected to each other and they are in a straight line as opposed to, you know, orthogonally connected like this. So these three cells must contain three, um, three digits that are not the same parity. So for example, this couldn't be one, I'm in color mode still, this can't be one, three, five, there must be some sort of even digit in here to break it up. Or 2, 4, 6 also wouldn't be valid because you need an odd digit in there to break it up. And that is true for any set of three orthogonally connected cells in a straight line, horizontally or vertically. Then we go to some uh, more normal rules, maybe more familiar rules, you could say. Cell separated by an X must sum to 10. Cell separated by a V must sum to 5. All X's and V's are given. So these are our X V rules, except we have a negative constraint. So these two cells separated by the X must sum to 10. These two cells separated by the V must sum to 5. However, if we were to place 1 here, we would immediately know that 4 and 9 couldn't go in any of the orthogonally connected cells to the 1. That's because by placing 4 here, we have now made a pair that sums to 5. But there is no X there. In the same way, if I place a 9 here, there is no x here, but we have a pair that sums to 10, and that is not allowed by our negative constraint. Then, finally, we have little killer. Digits along the indicated diagonal must sum to the total given. So these five cells here must sum to 24 because that's what the clue says. Again, a familiar constraint. Those are the rules. Let's just jump right into it. All right. So for an X windmill Sudoku, right off the bat, you should know what digit goes in the center, and that will be the digit five. And um, I won't, I won't really, I won't rigorously prove it, but just think about what the opposite pair to five would be on a or, or on the X sum, or not the X sum, on the X windmill, right? And that might, uh, might key you in into why you can't place 5 in any of the other cells here. Then what we can look at is, um, is, is all these x's and v's. And v's will always contain a set of low digits. So hopefully that makes sense, right? It's, it's either going to be 1, 4, or 2, 3. So it's always going to be low digits. And for now, I'll just throw down 1, 2, 3, 4. And I won't try to disambiguate them, but given the nature of this puzzle, it will be helpful to uh, do some color coding. Or in one case I saw on the Cracking the Cryptic Discord when people were testing this, there was uh, one person who was actually using uh, the pen tool, not the pen tool, sorry, the letter tool to actually mark letters. So in case you didn't know, you're, you can actually mark letters in... <laughs> in Sudoku pad, but you have to turn that on in the settings. Anyways, we'll continue through with our 1, 2, 3, 4. 
And any of our rotationally symmetric cells must sum to 10, which means anything opposite a low digit must be a high digit. So we'll go through, we'll do that, follow our, uh, follow our thing the whole way through. All right, these will be from the set. Let me make sure I switch off my, my letters. These will be from the set 6, 7, 8, 9. And whenever we have an X that touches a, a low digit, you will have a high digit. So this will be a high digit, this will be a high digit, this will be a high digit, 6, 7, 8, 9. And in the same way, these will all be low digits, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep working through it. So 5, 5 tells us that this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, because it can't be 6, 7, 8, 9. In the same way, this will be 6, 7, 8, 9, because it can't be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. 9, um, and this might be where you, you'd like to start placing or looking at odds and even digits. And the reason I say that is because if you think about those opposite pairs, those x's, um, they will always be the same parity. 1, 9, 3, 7, all odd. 2, 8, 4, 6, all even. So if we placed a 7 or 9 here, then we would need a 1 or 3 here, and that would leave us with three odd digits in a row, which means these four surrounding cells must be odd, and these are even, sorry, and these must all be odd. Then on an X, like I just said, you will have a the same parity. And because of that, you'll get opposite parity here, because you can't have more than two odd or even in a row. Then connecting our x will be our double even. And then these will be odds. This will be odd. And actually, we have all four of our evens in the column. In a set of 1 to 9, we will only have four evens and five odds. So four evens tells us the rest of these must be odd. These will all be evens. Another way you could see that is that... Uh, Hey, this is on a V, and V will always have alternating parity on it, but we'll just go through. We'll do all of our yellows here. And you could continue working through this. What I found is uh, start thinking about fives. So fives are an interesting odd digit in that, uh, again, like I said, they their opposite pair must be something special. Their opposite pair will be a five. So, in this way, 5 is an odd digit. It must go in one of these two cells because it can't go in these two. It definitely can't go there. So, 5 will go somewhere here. 5 will go somewhere here. And again, what that does is, as we look across, 5 across, we're thinking about where 5 goes in these, uh, in these boxes, in these rows, and in these columns. So, for example, here, where does 5 go in column 1? 5 can only go here. Let me mark that. These will be both marked as odd. And furthermore, what that does is uh, it, uh, it gives us more digits. So this will be from the set 1, 2, 3, 4. This will be from the set 6, 7, 8, 9. This will also be from the set 6, 7, 8, 9. And this will also be from the set 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 gives us six, seven, eight, nine, though we could be a little bit more uh, more diligent about our odds and evens here, but I won't worry about that just yet. And we can continue specifically marking odds and evens, but I think what we should do is, uh, first off, let's pull out all of our odd digits. So this can't be one, it can't be three, can't be... Uh, 7 can't be 9, so pull all of those options out. From here, we'll make sure that we don't have any 2s, any 4s, any 6s, or any 8s. And this is where you can keep playing with these odds and evens, but at the end of the day, this Sudoku is very much... Uh, I like the word that someone used. I don't think I'd heard this uh, this term to... Uh, to represent this type of Sudoku, but it's it's essentially a placeholder Sudoku. So as we look at certain digits here, right, because we've done some 
like 2, 4, odd, even, that sort of work. We know that these need to be each a distinct digit. So we can actually start to try to find placements of those relative digits. And especially on x's, like right off the bat, because this x must go with this, we know that this 1, 3 is the same as this 1, 3. So we can start building these relationships between cells in the grid. And again, some people, they like using lettering for this. I'm, uh, I'm always going to be a, a color coding guy, I think. So that's what we're going to actually do. We're going to build some relations. So let's start by actually like coloring these things in. So we'll, we'll go through and we'll give each of these things a color. And uh, I am looking off to the side here because ahead of time, I have chosen my, my color coding. That's because a lot of times I'll just sit here and I'll try to figure out what I think the ideal color coding is. And it's just, it's just kind of a waste of time, especially if I'm just trying to present a solve. So 7, 9 is opposite 1, 3. That means these two sum to 10. Because of that, we know that these two must sum to 10, which makes this red. In the same way, that makes this the purple digit. Then as we, uh, as we continue through, um, we can say like 1, 3 pairs with what type of 2, 4? Well, if we look, we notice, hey, we would have to have blue with our, our 2, 4. In this case, we have red, so this must be the pale pink 2, 4. And again, we keep building out those relationships. This being green tells us that this must be the light blue. Light blue tells us that this must be green, or sorry, this must be light blue, and this must be green. This going with um, the green means that this is dark blue. That means that this is brown. So again, building those relationships out. And, uh, and we just continue through. So the 9, 1, 3. What's the best way to approach this? This is going to be an odd digit. Um, we'll know that this either has to be 1, 3, 7, or 9, right, to split up our even digits in the same way. And actually, sorry, again, I, I forgot all the color coding I did. We already have all of our odds and evens, so we can just go 1, 3, 7, 9. But specifically, we can get even more information by looking at this diagonal here. So we've touched on the X windmill. We've done some binary work. We've done some XV work. The little killer is actually going to come into play uh, right here. It, you don't have to, but I found that it, this can be quite helpful because, because we've already done some color coding, we know that this 2 and 4 are different than each other. And that's helpful because 2 plus 4 equals 6. You know, who knew? That means from this set here, we are, we're limited, right? 6 from 24 is 18. And if we maximized over here and we said 9 plus 4, 9 plus 4 only gets you to 13. That would mean you need at least 5 to make up the entire 24. What that does for us is it tells us that this cannot be a low digit. It must be a high digit. If that's the case, we know exactly what high digit is. We know that it is specifically 7, 9, and it is the purple 7, 9. In the same way, this can no longer be 7, 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is going to be our dark blue 1, 3. And we continue. So blue is opposite of brown that purple is opposite of red. Um, red can't be next to pale pink because it would need to have an, a, a V between it, which means that this is pale pink. Pale pink is opposite hot pink. And uh, again, we just continue these relationships. So now pale pink is six, eight. We have one, three, we have seven, nine which means this must either be 2, 4, the pale pink 2, 4, which it can't be, or 5, which means it is, in fact, 5. So um, let's actually label those as, sorry, 
it's actually labeled as five, and let's make sure that all of our fives are color coded appropriately. Um, we're only missing hot pink from here. From the uh, from the column here, we're only missing pale pink. And again, as we continue building these relationships, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to do more throughout the grid. So pale pink can't be five; it must be two four here. And uh, yeah, we continue through. So 1, 3 tells us that this must be 2, 4. It must be the green 2, 4, which means this must be the blue 1, 3. Then, and actually I probably should, shouldn't waste too much time going through because I'll, uh, I'll fix all of that later. But at the very least, I should make sure that my colors are in the right place. Um, sorry, this can... Uh, This, sorry, this has to be the pale pink, and this being pale pink makes this red. A little slow to the punches there. Uh, one, two, three, four must be the pale pink red set, so this must be red. This must be pale pink. Can this be the pale pink red set? No, so this has to be the pale pink red set, so this is pale pink, this is red. And like I said, we just keep going through, placing our, our colors here. And this will be that. And we're actually done with our pale pinks. Reds now. Let's see if we can uh, do our reds. We know that this will be red because red is going to be from the set of low digits. So it can't be 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, sorry. Yes, green, green 2, 4, sorry, <laughs> again, green 2, 4 will go there, green 2, 4 goes with light blue, light blue goes here, which means this is green 2, 4, which means this is blue 1, 3, again, not remembering exactly what digits, but if you're just looking at the color relationships, those should be readily apparent. Um, again, when it, also whenever we have a color, we can place the opposite, so this is uh, is the hot pink. Blue is opposite of brown. Pink is opposite of hot pink. And, uh, and we continue. So, what was I going to do? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, we have these colorings here. So, we can do the coloring here. This will be purple. Pink is opposite hot pink, as I've said. Blue is opposite brown, green is uh, green is opposite light blue, red is opposite purple, and we'll see if we can't do more Sudoku with our colors here. This is purple, this is purple, and we're actually done with our purples. Let's see our pale pinks. We're done with pale pinks. The dark blues, let's do dark blue here, we'll do dark blue here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I feel like I should be able to do that. Hmm. Anyways, pale pink. Let's make sure we got our hot pink. Light blue. Light blue is doable here. Light blue goes here, which means light blue goes there. I think we're done with our light blues. Yep. Fives can't pl quite do yet. Two fours are green two fours. This will be green here. This will be green here. This will be green here. Then browns. We can place brown here. This is brown. This is brown. This is brown. And we're done with browns. Hot pink. We can place here. We can place here. Are we done with hot pinks? It looks like it. Reds. Almost done. Red here. Red here. And then it's just about filling in whatever uh, whatever color we haven't done. So in this case, we haven't done dark blue here. Here we haven't done our yellow, which places our yellow. So we should do our fives real quick. This is five. This is five. And finally, ac across from our brown, is our dark blue. So we'll go through here, our dark blues, we will replace that 1, 3 once again. Our light blues will replace 6, 8. Uh, we'll just go through here in this set, 7, 9. 
two, four. We did one, three, six, eight, two, four, two, four. Replace seven, nine. And of course, if you were maybe a little bit quicker about uh, how you did this color coding or uh, or the pencil marking, you weren't uh, you weren't so uh, diligent on the pencil marking. You would uh, you would get to this point a little bit faster, but all the same. Now, how do we actually solve this Sudoku? How do we place the digits that uh, that do it all for us? And what happens is, is this 24 does all of this disambiguating for us. Before we were looking at the option of 9 and 4 as our maximum, which even which is what gave us the 7, 9 in the first place. However, however, this does even more work because the purple and the blue, or sorry, the purple and the red are our opposite pairs then these two must sum to 10. And we know that these are opposite from each other, so these must sum to 6. We now have 16. How do we get to from 16 to 24? The only way to do that is with 8. The only way to make 10 is with 2. Um, and we continue through. This will be 4. 4 will give us 1 here. Um, 1 will give us 9. 9 will give us 7. Uh, 8 gives us 6, and finally, to finish us off, we have 3s with a 3 in the corner in 18 minutes and 10 seconds. Not, uh, not that the time really matters here, but uh, yeah, that is how, uh, how you, you can approach this Sudoku. Um, it's possible to stick with odd evens for a little bit longer, but it's not strictly necessary. And sometimes to do some sort of disambiguating work, you could just uh, look there. It's possible even that you don't even need to look at the 24 at the end. There might be some relationship that I didn't even think about where you would know which, uh, which order was which, but given that all of these pairs are were either odd or even like two four six eight one three i don't think that was uh that was possible but anyways with all of that rambling aside i hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching